And now, suspense. He found the body. Then I called you. How'd you know this was the girl? I listened to the radio. I knew she was missing. Anyway, she was in my class at school. Okay, let's get back to the phone. You people stick around. I want to talk to you. All right, let's go. Take all night. Uh, what do you say, Frank? You gonna take all night? Not if I can help it. Relish. You got an onion, Lieutenant. Onion for food, relish. Got relish and mustard. That's for crude ketchup. Frank, tell him we're closed. I'm going to speak back. Take him home. He's feeling kind of low. Hi, Jim. Why didn't you come home? I'm still waiting for a call. Hey, uh, give me a strawberry lime. A what? A straw. Hey, don't you know what that is? You want on me? Well, it's 50 50. Strawberry and lime. All the kids around here drink it. Yeah. What did you do? Just blow into town? A month ago. this corsage of roses, and the card on it said, my heart dies for you, sighs for you. Just last week, commencement, and she walked out the door at school. She got in somebody's car, and that's all. Who gave her the corsage? Nobody knows. She, uh, she have any boyfriend? No. She was a quiet girl, like me. I guess that's why we were such good friends. Smitty's. Yeah. Spivak. Sergeant Spivak calling. Yeah, Spiv. It's her, all right. Clothes torn. Looks like wounds from a hunting knife. Well, nothing much. No, the tire marks are all covered by the trucks on the ranch. There's a smear of blood on her left leg. I figure that, well, I mean, maybe it's somebody else's blood. Well, we'll get a check. Anybody around there see anything? Yeah. Yeah. All right, stay there, Spiv. We'll be right down. <laughs> That's Spivak? Yeah, I've got to leave in a minute. You know, I wish I was a retired sea captain like you. Jim, did they find her? Yeah, honey, on a ranch under some sand. 
Go on, Holmes, will you? Come on. How'd the body get there? I don't know. Spivak says about a week ago, some farmer was going home and he saw a car turn off the San Diego San Cedro Highway. Went into a dirt road that led right up to where the body was found. What kind of a car? 49 sedan, blue. License number began with 8F. Had only a driver, a man wearing a gray gabardine trench coat. Any ideas? Well, maybe a stranger going through town. Maybe a hunter. Murder weapon had an 8-inch narrow blade. How soon do you expect any action? You come to my office in 36 hours, I'll show you the killer. Hi, Commissioner. Sergeant, Lieutenant Connor show up yet? No, not yet. Jim Connor, huh? Jim, what do you mean by staying away like this? I like working alone, Chief. People climbing my back to get me down. All right, so what did you do? Of course, you brought in the killer. Hey, stay back. Send that kid in. Listen, Jim. The governor's been calling me. The wire services. Half the newspapers across the country. Don't put pressure on me. I'm a creative thinker. What? Jody Summer. Hi, right, Jody. How you been? Okay, Mr. Connor. Tell the commissioner what you told me. It's kind of hot in here. Mm. Here. Thanks. Sit down on that chair. Right there, Jody. Well, uh, I was fishing in the Ventana River, and all at once his car drives up, and this fella runs down to the bank. What kind of fella, Jody? He was a good-looking young fellow. It's like complected with, with some kind of a scar, I think. Uh-huh. All right, then, uh, then what did this fella do, Jody? Well, well, he pulls out a hunting knife and he, and he throws it in the river, scabbard and all. Then he tears up the bank and he drives away. That the knife, Jody? Sure looks like it. We found it right where the kid said it was. Okay, Jody. Get yourself some lunch. Stick around, will you? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm spent. Show the big boss exhibit WXYZ2Z, eh? See the postmark? See the address? Uh, well, a certain local party mails this out of town just as soon as he hears the description of a certain gray gabardine trench coat. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Finish, Bill. Uh-huh. Hey. Frank Orbach, short order cook at Smitty's. He's only been in town about a month, but I figured he might be able to throw a little light on our problem. Uh, I see. Sit down, Frank, over there. Thank you. Cigarette? Huh. I don't mind if I do. Got a car, Frank? Yeah, an old one. Have it a long time, or did you buy it second hand? Yeah, second hand. Uh, gray, gray coupe. Turn in another car for it? Yeah. When did you do that? Gee, I don't rightly remember. It, it was in L.A., I know that. All right, Frank. Let's, uh, let's see your slip on it. Huh? Slip? Yeah. A white slip they give you. Oh, that. Oh, I... Uh, I guess I, I guess I must have mislaid it. All right, Frank. Come on, let's have that slip. Oh. There it is. Turned it in yesterday. Forty-nine sedan. Color blue. License number eight F seven two nine. Honestly, oh. I didn't do it. I didn't tell that girl. That's yours, Frank. Could be. I, I lost one just like it about him. About a month ago. Put that coat on, Frank. Try it inside. Ah. It's pretty good, doesn't it? That's your coat, Frank? What do you say, boy? You're going to sign a confession? I didn't kill it. I tell you, I did it. I didn't kill it. All right, come on. Take it easy. Take it easy. All right, let's I go. I didn't kill it. Come on. Get out of here. Great work, Jim. Great. We'll throw everything we got at the DA. We'll have that guy frying in a month. Here. Here, Jim. 
Hey, Jim. Yeah? Hey, for how long since you've been to bed? Oh, three, four days. Well, come on, you take a week off and get some rest, will you? Thanks. We'll show everything we got to the DA. After we do that, you start on your vacation, huh? Okay, Chief. Hey. Convertible. How about a hot shot across the desert? Oh, you see, no thanks. Okay. But the way I figure it, as long as I got the guy, why not celebrate? Hi. Funny thing, you know. Do a good job, everybody says it's lousy. Then you do some lousy job, and everybody says, Great work, Jim. What's love? It's Chase. Aren't you happy it's solved? I don't think it's solved at all. What? We kept a couple of things out of the papers because we didn't want to get too much around. We got two good reasons. First of all, it's the blood smear that was on the girl's leg. She's got type O blood. The smear was type H, and that's very rare. Was it Frank Orbach's blood? No, he's type O. Uh -huh. And there's this farmer in San Cedro that saw the car. He said that there was a piece of chromium loose on the trunk compartment. By the time we got the Orbach's car, the garage man had gone to work on it. Stripped everything off. I still don't see why this worries you, Jim. Well, I'm beginning to wonder if the kid wasn't telling the truth, if he was just scared like he said he was. Some people are scared all the time, you know. Well, if it wasn't him, where did he still lose? Well, that's right. Maybe he's a psycho. See why I'm worried? Come on, let's go home. Oh, Kathy. Yes, what? I left this for you. Me? What flowers? Oh, look. Corsage of roses. across the street here. Yeah? I'll go in here with Pop. Now look, CCDA, that means Citizen Civilian Defense Association. You got it? Okay. Hey, Pop. What do you want? A couple of questions I want to ask you. Oh, it's too hot. This little survey I'm making, Pop. What for? It's the Citizen Civilian Defense Association. Are you willing and able to make yourself available in time of emergency? Sure. All right. You willing and able to furnish a car if needed for emergency transport? Don't have a car. What type of blood are you, Pop? I'm the hot-blooded type. Very funny. Come on, what type of blood are you? How the heck should I know? Pop, uh, give me a package of English open. Oh, Captain, I'll come over to see you. Oh, not now. I want to ask you a couple of questions. Not now, no, sir. I got to force them. There's two questions, Captain. Not now. Where's the fire? Look at the trunk compartment in his car. He's got a piece of loose chromium. You see that license number, Pop? Looks like uh, 3E something. 3E? 3E, 80, uh, I didn't quite see. How about 8F? What difference does it make? Plenty. Make a little survey, Captain, all over town. Civilian Students Fence Company. Yeah? Captain, you know, I've been going around 
Door to door, she got tired and went home. Well, let's have it. Okay, defense. You willing to make yourself available in time of emergency? Certainly. You willing to able to furnish a car if needed for emergency transport? Certainly. One more question, Captain. What type of blood are you? H. H? Yeah, is that unusual? No, no, of course not. <laughs> Sounds great. Well, it's just you're the first H I've run across in town, that's all. Yeah? Thanks, Captain. How about a little game? Uh, I'm really getting bored with billiards, but what else for me to do? Yeah, nothing to do but kill time, huh? See you later, Captain. All right. Honestly, Jim, I don't know why you don't try to be more of a friend to yourself. You do a smart job and everybody's perfectly happy. Then you start tearing it down with this phony survey. You know, Jim, I... I really think there's something kind of self-destructive about you. I didn't come here to listen to philosophy. I came to tell you Merriman's a killer. Now, just keep cool, Keep with cool? This guy's gonna kill another kid any minute. You tell me to keep cool. Just a minute, Jim. Listen, five days ago, you came in here and you told me you were convinced that that Jody kid was the killer. You knew it, you said, because you traced this corsage to him, you know? Then you found out the kid was just playing some kind of a little practical joke. Now today, you're in here telling me it's Merriman. All right, look at the facts. He's got H-blood. Oh, that H-blood doesn't mean a thing. Now go on, Jim. What do you mean it doesn't mean a thing? He's got the only H-blood in town. I know it. But, Jim, that blood smear doesn't necessarily have to have come from that killer. Don't you see? She could have had, oh, some kind of a little accident or bumped into somebody or something. Don't you see that? Now, circumstantial, Jim. Everything you've got is just circumstantial. Now, ain't that so? Yeah, and so is your evidence against Frank Orbach. Circumstantial. But, Jim, we got a case. You haven't got anything that some little brat from law school couldn't throw out of a court in about two minutes flat. Well, I admit it's based on a certain amount of hunch. Jim, you want me to give you the secret of happiness, huh? Just don't go around trying to carry other people's burdens. Now, if the DA's mind's at rest, and my mind is at rest, and the governor's mind is at rest... Yeah, I get it. Who am I to beef, huh? See you Monday, Chief. Okay, Jim. I'd love to go on a picnic with you. Well, where should I meet you? Uh-huh. Well, well, now that school's out and everybody's away. Uh-huh. Well, I'll be right there. So long. Thing that you and Jim are up to. That's just a big bluff. Jim's using that to try and find the killer. How do you mean? Well, I wasn't supposed to say anything. You can tell me, can't you, Kathy? Jim's got the idea that some crazy guy's loose in town. But has he got any evidence? Not a bit. No. Well, better pack up. It's getting dark. Kathy, you know what I wish most of all in the world? I wish I were your age. You know, if I were going to die right now, I'd like to die to that music. I wouldn't. I'd like to die in one big explosion and never know. You know, I had three ships sunk under me in the war. I wasn't even afraid. Now that I'm retired, now that there's nothing in the world but to face it. You know, the worst terror is when you're all alone at night, in the dead of night in your room, and you reach for a book, but the best book in the world is just waste paper. You play books, records, 
records, records. I played them over and over again. But all, all I can hear is a clock ticking time and me away. And that makes me desperate. That's why I watch the kids come and go, laughing and young every day. And that makes me more desperate. And I want to reach out and, and grasp. Kathy, when a man like that is rejected, you know what he can do? He can do terrible things. Out of, out of loneliness. Out of loneliness and terror. Did you kill her? Why do you ask that? Because you just told me you did. Well, I'm glad you understand. I'm glad you understand. That's why I really brought you out here. I had to break the silence. I had to have someone to tell it to. We better go now. Yes, yes. No, no. Wait. You've got to tell Jim. I will. I just want to hear the end of this music. Hey, cop, fix me a plate of chili and beans, will ya? Hey, that's a beauty. A couple more weeks vacation and you'll beat Merriman. <laughs> well, let me get this one, huh? Uh, By the way, I saw him uh, driving with your sister this afternoon. Oh. Merriman, they come out of the country club, headed south. What? Hey, wait a minute. Where's your car? That was three hours ago. Come on, we got a plan. We got here. I will. I just wanted a call from here. With all my things around me. How for now? You know, uh, couldn't you just not say anything? Couldn't, couldn't this be a secret between us forever and ever? Listen, I'll do anything for you. I'll give you anything. I'll leave everything I have to you. Kathy, Kathy! 600 oh, no, I can't let you do it. CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.